Hello, my name is Ellen Kamei, and I am the mayor for the city of Mountain View. Gabriel Mistral Elementary School is in the city of Mountain View, so you are all my bosses. I'll, I work for, for you, everybody who lives, works, plays in the city of Mountain View. I was elected in 2018, and in 2021, the seven other people on our city council decided that I should be the mayor for this year. So I'm really excited to be here with all of you. Hola, mi nombre es Ellen Kamei. Yo soy alcalde de la ciudad de Mountain View. And Gabriel Mistral es en la ciudad. Y entonces, a todos son mis jefes. <laughs> so we are going to read a different pond. And I wonder what it will be about. It has so many beautiful pictures. So let's start. When I open the book, I can see even more pictures inside. What do you see? Maybe you see the bunny or the chopsticks. Let's start reading and see what it's all about. It says, for my family, and for refugees everywhere, for the working class and all the young dudes. Dad wakes me up quietly so mom can keep sleeping. It will be hours before the sun comes up. In the kitchen, the bare bulb is burning. Dad has been up for a while making sandwiches and packing the car. Can I help? I ask. Sure, my dad whispers and hands me the tackle box. You see mom still sleeping, them getting ready in the kitchen, and look with the tackle box. The street lights look brighter and the roads aren't so busy before the sun comes up. Dad turns on the heater and tells me stories. A kid at my school said my dad's English sounds like a thick, dirty river. But to me, his English sounds like a gentle rain. We stop at the bait store on Lake Street. It always seems to be open. Oh, and you can see it says, Panetta Tacos, Pueblo Nuestras Especiales. Do you see that? You're here early today, the bait man says. I got a second job, my dad explains. I have to work this morning. On a Saturday, the bait man asks. My dad nods. I feel the bag of minnows move. They swim like silver arrows in my hands. You can see the bait. It's still dark when we get to the pond. We park the car and climb over the divider between the roads and the trees. My dad holds my hand and walks ahead through the tangle and scrub. Step where I step, he says. I'm thinking about what dad told the bait man. If you got another job, why do we still have to fish for food, I ask. Everything in America costs a lot of money, he explains. I feel calluses on his hand when he squeezes mine. And the calluses, you know, are the rough parts on the hand. See you, they parked the car and they're climbing over to go fish. Sometimes a Hmong man is at the pond. He speaks English like my dad and likes to tell funny jokes. 
Sometimes there is a black man there too. He shows me his colorful lure collection. This time it is just me and my dad. It is a little bit cold. I rub my hands together. I yawn and look up to see the faint stars like freckles. As dad sets up in a clearing, I gather small, thin twigs for a fire. They need to be dry and clean. I count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then ten more for later. I put some rocks in a circle and set up the twigs. Like a volcano, Dad reminds me. I set one end of each twig down and the other up, leaning them in so they rest against each other and hold each other up. I get it to light with just one match. My dad nods. So here he is gathering all his sticks. And then here he is setting up the fire. You want to put a minnow on the hook, Dad asks. I want to help, but I shake my head. No, I don't want to hurt that little fish, even if I know it's about to be eaten by a bigger one. My dad smiles. He isn't upset with me. So they're getting ready to go fish, and they're going to put the little fish on the hook, and they're going to go fishing here. Dad hands me a sandwich, cold bologna between two pieces of bread. Careful of the spicy stuff, he says. There's half a peppercorn, like a moon split in two, studded into the meat. I used to fish by a pond like this when I was a boy in Vietnam, he says, biting into his sandwich. With your brother, I ask. He nods, but looks away. Dad tells me about the war but only sometimes. He and his brother fought side by side. One day, his brother didn't come home. They're eating sandwiches. And they're talking here. The bobber dips in the dark and dad pulls. Got one, he says, almost shouting. A crappy. And soon, another one. Can I help, I ask? He nods, and I use two hands to help guide the fish into the bucket. The fish feels slimy and rough at the same time. Dad laughs at the funny face I make. This is the bobber. And then look, they got a fish. Dad smiles, his teeth broken and white in the dark because we have a few fish and he knows we will eat tonight. Time to go home. Dad must get ready for work. He washes his hands with a small nub of green and white soap. Then I do the same. I look at the trees as we walk back to the car. I wonder what the trees look like at the other pond in the country my dad comes from. By the time we get home, the sunlight coming through the window is a faint tint, blue and gray instead of gold. At home, mom looks tired, but she smiles at the fish in the big white bucket. They're coming home, and here's inside here is the fish. My dad changes his clothes and gets ready for work. He pats me on the back and says to mom, our boy did a good job with the fire today. You learn so quickly, my mom says, 
Then she asks me to help with the fish before she has to go to work too. I'm sad that she and dad must leave, but not too sad. I know that they will both come home. Look after your baby brother, mom reminds my brothers and sisters. She means me. Then she gets on her bike and goes to work. I am not a baby, I think to myself. I helped catch dinner. Dad's getting ready for work and they're gonna clean the fish. And this is his parents leaving for work. Tonight, when we are all home, dad will put rice in the cooker and mom will fry the fish on both sides until they are crispy. I will bring out the jar of fish sauce that has flecks of chili pepper and carrots floating on the top. At the table, my brothers and sisters will tell funny stories. Mom will ask about their homework. Dad will nod and smile and eat with his, ass, with his eyes half closed. Good fish, he will say to me. And when I smile and nod, and later when we sleep, we will dream of fish in faraway ponds. And that's the end of the book. And then they have a note about the author, both of the authors with their families. That's pretty cool, right? Maybe some of you have brothers and sisters too. So that was A Different Pond. What do you all think of the book? Did you like it? Did it make you hungry? Now I'm hungry and I want fish. ¿Qué tal para esas del libro? ¿Tienes hambre como yo? <laughs> yo pienso que sí, right? Exactly. Well, thank you all so much for letting me read a book with you. And I hope that you stay well and that you stay healthy with your families until we can all be together again. I know school will be starting very soon, hopefully in person for all of you. Pues, yo pienso que todos uh, cuídate bien and tienes salud y laves los manos, right? So that we can all be together. All right, everyone, thank you so much.